All right, hello guys. Uh, boxing was something else this weekend. Uh, Usyk deserved that win. I don't think uh, it, it was a close fight. Uh, we watched it. Uh, I, I believe Usyk won that fight. Um, I don't think there's anything controversial about that decision or really anything with it. Uh, I believe Fury threw uh, quite a few lower blows, but I don't think there was anything intentional about it. Uh, when a taller guy is trying to go to the body uh, on, on a a shorter guy uh, where you're talking about a, a big height differential uh, it's more difficult and Joshua kind of hit him low that one fight so uh, hit Usyk low too it's just something that happens and a lot of people that uh, they love boxing but uh, well, it, it takes some time to understand this sport uh, I mean it really does and you can be full of gray hair like me or uh, be a 13 year old kid and you're still learning things about it uh, even if you don't participate in it and you just watch it you, you still start learn. you continue to learn a lot about boxing so I don't think there's anything controversial about it uh, Real Talk talked about uh, you know what they were talking about the decision being given to Usyk because his country was at war and stuff like that now I've gotten I don't, and I don't believe that that's what happened at all myself now I was rooting for Tyson Fury uh I was not rooting for Usyk in this thing, and I got political with it, so I want to explain myself. Uh, I got upset when I started seeing a lot of the boxers and movie people and entertainers and rich people from Ukraine hanging out in Bel Air, California, while their countrymen, countrymen were getting killed in war. And that's what a lot of these Ukrainians have done. Uh, this war needs to stop. Uh, if that president loved uh, that country, uh, he wouldn't have shut the churches down. He's done it. And he wouldn't have, and I'm, I'm not talking Putin. I'm talking the president of the Ukraine. He shut the churches down. Rich people, including himself, are repeatedly hanging out in Bel Air and uh, other Hollywood uh, places and living high off the hog while their countrymen are at war. Uh, and if he loved that country, he would have sought peace. And if Biden gave a crap about any Ukrainians, he would have asked him to seek peace, even if he wasn't wanting to do it. But, uh, and give some territory up and exist. Because uh, there's not going to be much there to exist by the time this is done. So, I got a little upset with Usyk about that uh, when I saw him parading around Hollywood. But he ain't been parading around Hollywood no more, folks. He nor anybody in that team has come close to there. And I believe he realized. I believe he realized. So, uh, and realized how bad it looked and how bad it actually was. So, off of the politics, Usyk will help uh, engineer bringing the heavyweight division back down to the size of, of men that needs to be in that division. Uh, 
a lot of you you just get conditioned so quickly to uh, things and uh, I think I do too but in boxing I don't get conditioned to things uh, I learn new things every day but I'm telling you uh, this the Giants in the heavyweight division have actually even well it brought about the the uh, the addition of the uh, well they call it the bridger weight division and cruiser weight divisions and uh, which we don't need we don't we don't need it all and I'll tell you why because a guy from around 185 pounds to 215 pounds can whoop up on a giant. Uh, so we just really don't have good boxing in the heavyweight division, nor the cruiserweight division right now. And it's hard for a lot of you to see, and you've even if you knew it in the beginning, you've been conditioned to forget about it or to believe different. And I'm telling you a fundamental truth in boxing today. In the heavyweight division, uh, and cruiserweight division, we do not have I any sluggers left. Uh, y'all look at J Jared Anderson, and y'all see uh, this, oh my gosh, he's going to beat up everybody, he's going to knock everybody out. No, he's not. Uh, you guys looked at Deontay Wilder. Uh, the, the, his punch... Well, was I mean it was a hard punch, but was it one of the greatest sluggers punches? No, not by a long shot. Look, folks, you can put uh, George Foreman, who had a heavy punch, uh, uh, Ernie Shavers, Ron Lyle, uh, Sonny Liston, uh, Cleveland Williams. Joe Frazier and every one of those guys I just mentioned and 10 more if I sat and thought about it long enough uh, towards the latter part of the last century hit a lot harder than anybody today and they were a lot faster and the only thing I believe that's improved in boxing as of late in these past decades past few decades has been defense. Uh, so you're seeing a lot of the science that don't get hit, uh, but the most fundamental part of it, which is hit and then don't get hit, the hit parts being <laughs> obliterated. And, and we're turning this into a patty cake sport. Even in our lower divisions, you go down and you look. Uh, let me tell you this. I think the hardest hitting guy at, at around 135 is Tank Davis. Uh, that kid can hit, and he's a lefty, which makes that left a lot more dangerous because uh, you typically these other guys don't see the punch coming. Uh, but they're just go go back and watch any of his fights and I don't mean disrespect to him or, or any fighter as a matter of fact but uh, you go back and you look and there's a lot of posturing a lot of posturing and start listening to people I, I'm guilty a while back uh, Zeke Castro senior and junior have watched some stuff on our channel and of course we religiously watch them uh, Zeke's our favorite uh, amateur or professional fighter right now uh, he's our favorite guy uh, I had more emotion going into him going into the Nationals than I did in this fight Saturday afternoon and uh, so a lot of respect there and we're big fans of the Castros so Zeke's dad was watching uh, one of our videos one day and he he told us he said there's a man he didn't mean it ugly he he loved us enough to tell us the truth 
he said, well, there's a lot of, he was, Joe was sparring, he said, uh, there's a lot of posturing going on. You know, be careful with that posturing. There's a lot of posturing going on. And uh, we, I, I kind of defended that and was like, well, blah, 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 blah. And I think it was the next week, Joe sparring again and uh, sparring with a different guy, a bigger guy. And I'm jumping on them about, on both the boys that to posture. And uh, so we're always continually learning things. And I had to see for myself and I was like, he planted that seed in, in my head and in my heart and I was looking with my own eyes and hearing with my own ears. And I was like, by George, he's exactly right. And I jumped the boys about posturing. And I was like, what was I thinking? But see, when you're on the outside looking in, uh, you can see a lot more than when you're on the inside of the bubble. And... Uh, I want to end by, by uh, I know I've been all over the place with this, but I want to tell you guys uh, there's something per really important because uh, I just said it and I just thought about it. The way Zeke Sr. planted a, a seed in my head and in my heart over that posturing uh which worked to our benefit when I decided to let the seed take hold, um, that's the way the good Lord works with you. So remember that. Let things take hold. Now I want to give you just a little personal thing here. We've been worried about the car and getting it back on the road and insurance and redoing the registration and all these things and I took the car out Saturday Joe and I did and you know the car sat for a couple of years so squeaking started coming from the back and I don't know if it's the rear end from where it sat for so long or possibly the uh, maybe it's just rear brakes and it's possible it could be rear wheel bearings which will be an event to get that took care of as well uh, so we've had some little bit of worry going on with that so uh, uh, Joe and I went up to the bank this morning and I just told Joe I said well I don't uh know how this is going to work out but I want to uh, consolidate out what credit I got and get a lower payment and uh, get a little bit extra so we can get some breathing room around here because we're struggling. Uh, first off that ain't struggling. It just feels like I'm struggling. Uh, having high be uh, credit and whatever you know uh, be thankful somebody gave you credit. That's number one. Number two, God ain't in the loan company business. And uh, so I was telling Joe, I said, you know, son, I'm probably going to get a no here. I don't know how this is going to work out. But however it works out, it's what it's meant to be. Uh, because it ain't like none of this what I'm talking about is monumental. It's a damn car. And God ain't in a Cadillac or Mitsubishi or Nissan dealership business either, folks. Uh, I can get by just fine without that car. And uh, so anyway... You know, I'm like, Lord, let this work out how, you, how it can be a benefit and that I don't throw a monkey wrench in everything because I'm my, my worst own enemy. And I'm going to tell you something. You are your worst own enemy 
if you start admitting things to yourself, if you start fessing up with wrong you've done, uh, and you start looking at yourself clear, you'll realize people weren't lining up to hurt you or push you down. Uh, you're doing it to yourself. You're looking for excuses for your own inadequacies and your own mess-ups. Uh, and how do I know this? Because I'm, I'm probably way older than you, and I'm, and I'm sure I'm as smart or smarter than you are, and this is excellent advice, and I've heard it uh, for decade after decade after decade. I've had older people tell me this, although I didn't want to listen to it. I hope you do listen to it. You're your own worst enemy. Uh, but I went in the bank, and for some reason, uh, I guess the Lord and the bank only know. They didn't tell me why, and I wasn't pushing it. Because uh, I'm sitting there. The amount they told me they'd lend me on my signature was as if I was maybe Donald Trump walking in the bank or something. Uh I, I was shot. I, was, I said, what? You know, made a mistake. No, no, we ain't made no mistake. This is uh, approved right off. And, and that was approved right off the bat. It didn't have to go to a board or managers or anything. She said, just sign the paper and we'll load your account up right now. And I was shocked at the amount that they offered me. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, of course, we ain't going to get all that, but uh, I always need money around here, but I always worry them with it. And the more things you get, uh, the more credit you got, the more money you make, uh, the more opportunities you take, present worry and I'm at a point I don't want no more worry than what I got so but that turned out real good for us uh, haven't made my mind up on the amount that I'm going to get yet but it turned out real good and uh, uh, we've been struggling so I want everybody around us to know uh, that if you're struggling you ain't the only one just keep pushing forward. We're still struggling, and I'll keep pushing forward. Uh, thank God for what you do have. The thing I thank God for most is giving me my son and the relationship that we have. I thank the Lord for that. I am so lucky. I am the luckiest. From my perspective, I'm the luckiest man walking the face of the earth. If I were with Donald Trump right now, I'd probably be telling him, you know what, we love you and we want you to be president again, but maybe go spend your life with your youngest boy now. Take your time and be a, what you can and try to be a full-time dad. Uh, Lord knows Trump would enjoy it. He don't maybe he don't understand that right now, but if he did it, he would. And you will too. So if you got two hours a day to spend with your children, spend it. If you got ten minutes a week to spend with your children, spend it. Giving them as much undivided attention as you can. So much love to everybody. I know I babbled off about a bunch of stuff. Uh, but a lot of, I just felt compelled to talk about a, a lot of the things that I did talk about. And remember in boxing, uh, one person will say, uh, he'll fight off the back foot, and then every single boxing news program in the world will take that and roll with it. Uh, don't be like that. If you you're gonna be ordinary, and even former champions are very ordinary with respects to that. But you got a lot of people uh, that weren't really no, aren't really normal to that, and that's what I'm trying to be in. So 
a lot of a lot of folks they 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 see what we're doing they're like what in the heck are these guys doing uh and just to reiterate to you uh we're we're doing what they did back in the 60s predominantly and pretty much through the 70s and we will continue to do so and uh and we're moving slow we're not moving fast don't have anything to prove so uh the last thing I want to say uh, is much love to everybody. I'm going to put a video out, uh, which is not going to be complicated at all, for young boxers to increase their punching power and be punching harder than anyone around them, and uh, quickly, too, and efficiently. And I'm going to put a video out probably later on this week concerning that. Joe's doing great. Uh, can't ask for more. Uh, doing great in the school work. Uh, he got upset last week. He uh, got two 98s. Uh, missed one two-point question on two nine-week exams he had. And uh, so just striving for, for perfection, just trying to be as good as we can be. So you do that too, and much love to you. Uh, blessings, God's blessings, our King's blessings to our fellow uh, uh, Christian brothers and sisters and to everybody else. Give our King a try. You won't, be, be, you won't feel bad that you did.